Hi, Rick and Vinny. Thank you so much for joining. One of us is talking today and I love your Christmas sweaters. So I'm themed. Thank so I'm you. Themed. <laughs> yeah, for, for those of you listening at home, I'm uh, basically Taylor Armstrong and Kyle Richards pointing at Vinny's sweater, which is- I am the cat. He's the cat from the- <laughs> I love it. So, I mean- I would say it's pretty fair to say the season you wrote one of the most iconic episodes. I mean, who doesn't love Simon says ho ho ho? That's <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I re think the reaction even before it came out, everyone was so excited for it and finally having that Christmas episode. So what was your reaction when you found out that you were going to write it? Oh man, it wasn't, we didn't find out, we fought for it. Because, you know, I mean, we we love uh, holiday episodes in teen shows. We, you know, you know, and once we plotted out the structure of season two, we identified like some of the holidays that we wanted to feature. And it was floated like, should we do Thanksgiving? Should we do Christmas, New Year's Eve? Yeah, there were a lot of Thanksgiving stands. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and we're like, why not do all of them? But, you know, as, as the time went on, we realized with eight episodes, we should probably only have like one themed one or that would just start to fill a little like every episode's the, the holiday. So, um, you know, eventually we had to face the fact that uh, we should only do one and it should absolutely be, you know, Christmas. Um, and, you know, I think once Erica, like simultaneous to this happening, like once Erica, like we were like potting out the season as a room and she had it like that once the kids realized that uh, Simon Says was capable of murder and you know in the Giselle episode where she's dead at the end that would be a moment where they would want to turn themselves in because they're good people and they don't want anyone else to get hurt and Vinny and I were like oh my god that's a whole episode that's like last night on earth and that's kind of how we pitched it and uh you know a moment to like actually see all of these characters who uh have to face the music and how do they want to spend their last night? And once once we settled on that, once that went through, we we're like, well, that's got to be Christmas, right? Because there's nothing more heartbreaking <laughs> and fun than uh, that holiday. So yeah, yeah, we really wanted a Christmas episode, and we really want. I really wanted to do the uh, queer warehouse party episode, and I was like, oh no, we're, they're going to make Erica's going to make us choose, or Erica's only going to give us one, and then just somehow. The, you know everything aligned and they became one episode and I was so thankful <laughs> yeah I mean there was so much in that episode and seeing it all come together there's like even though it was a Christmas episode it still was able to fit so much in that typically wouldn't be Christmas like the queer warehouse party and Bronwyn's karaoke scene but it was I mean it all fit in perfectly and I guess where did you draw inspiration for the moments well I like basically uh, one of my favorite movies is um, John August's movie Go, uh, which has sort of like this Rashomon thing going on and three storylines and it takes place over Christmas. They end up at a party, there's drug dealers. It just felt like so much happens in that movie. And then another movie, which actually, I don't remember if it actually takes place during Christmas, but it's, uh, uh, what's it called? <laughs> uh, mouth, language. oh sorry this is a family show <laughs> um, one of us is g-rated uh no it was um uh, not infinite playlist not so Zoe's easy. Infinite, i don't know what show i don't know what you're thinking of it's a movie it doesn't matter um i'll think of it well, <laughs> well let me let me google it while Vinny responds i uh, mostly you know i love well i love the holidays just in general uh, it's like my favorite time of year uh and i loved seeing I loved, you know, when seasons were 22 episodes long, you'd get the Halloween episode, you'd get all the things. And, you know, I, I there's certain things I love about being eight episodes. Do I wish we had more episodes and time to tell our story? Absolutely. But I really feel like that's something that has kind of been lost from teen shows in, in the recent past. You know, we don't have time for Christmas. We don't have time for the holidays. There's all these other stuff going on. So it was nice to kind of, see that come back and also take a step back in that very same episode to kind of you know away from the mystery away from all the plot machinations and kind of have some fun and emotional moments and that was really really satisfying to uh write well that's that's important too what Vinny just said because I think like it, it's important like un under these life or death stakes and and seeing you know the baby five 
six, seven, however many people join them, <laughs> the murder club, seeing the murder club, you know, faced with these horrible, in these horrible situations, you do want to carve out space to see them have fun and be happy. Otherwise, it's like, why bother? Why are they, you know, why are they even trying to stop these horrible things from happening? Everything sucks. Well, no, we want to see them, you know, we want to root for them and we want to see these moments that they're striving to get back to. They just so desperately want to have a normal teenage life. And it's just always dangled right in front of their faces. And I think that's where the, the drama happens. By the way, I realized the movie, it's uh, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. And oh. just, yeah, such an underrated classic. And like the way that they, oh, yeah. you know, but scene by scene, they're all like getting into some new situation around town. That's sort of how we structured uh, act three, where they, you know, go from place to place, whether it's the yeah. karaoke or the warehouse party or the nativity scene, that type of yeah. thing. I mean, they did so well with that. They really got all over the place in that one night. And I mean, it focused so much on each character too. Like we got to see them as people and they were just so like, I don't know, they were so out there and we really got to learn more about them too, which I thought was so fun. Even like that moment with Principal Gupta when she's writing the story was, whose idea was that? Because that was like... <laughs> <laughs> who was was that you yeah i think so i i really wanted I to shit in the room i mean erica was like yes allison knows that i lurk on twitter and i see a lot of <laughs> fans talking about uh ashton and we uh, love ashton yeah we love ashton we've always loved ashton all the writers love ashton all the writers the love ashton. we want to make it clear for the fans that we all love ashton but you know once we added Janae and some murder club, it felt like a lot of the scenes that that would be between Addie and Ashton would be, you know, were now between uh, Addie and Janae. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in, in this version of the story, it just made more sense. In a world where we only have eight episodes again, it, sadly, you have to lose some things. And it was really hard. I mean, like, but you would come in to work one day and be like, Ashton's alive. Next day, no, she's dead. <laughs> but we did, we did, we wanted to dunk on ourselves a little bit and say, like, mm -hmm. you know, our oh, we're the fan fiction, basically, you know, and that's kind of like what that that scene was about, um, you know, while also giving them uh, this fun little investigation during this episode. Yeah, no, that's so fun and kind of seeing that little nod to Ashton, and yeah, that's something fans have always been talking about. Will Ashton be in the episode? So kind of seeing Maeve almost take on that role and then having the name, it really was, I don't know, it was a great little Easter egg. And so, I mean, you lurk on Twitter, so you know a lot about what fans are saying. So was writing this Christmas episode intimidating, waiting to kind of see what how they would feel about it? I mean, yeah, it, it was it was a blast. It was intimidating because like we knew it would take a lot of work. I guess I wasn't really thinking about necessarily um, what what people would want from this episode because I knew, like I, I knew, we, yeah. like as as like fans yeah. ourselves, I knew what we wanted to see. Yeah, I think but it was knew. it was getting it was actually the intimidating part. It was getting there. It was like, how do we go in one episode from literally the lowest low, like they're going to turn themselves into the police, to uh, their you know, basically dancing at a gay warehouse party and making out with strangers. And we always knew that was going to be a big swing, but we also knew if we could do it, that it would be so satisfying and so wild. Uh, and 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 I think, you know, we just really wanted it to, to, to take basically the audience on that journey beat for beat, where we honor every step in between and we see the heartbreak and we see the pain and then we get to also have the fun. And I think that was that was hard. Every step of the way, you know, it was just constantly tightening the screws to get it right. But you know, it's it's really easy. I read the writers, all the writers are fantastic. Eric is in, like such a great leader, uh, you know, and we just got great notes along the way and um, hopefully it all worked out. I think another thing too is like, you know, obviously season two was venturing into territory that was not from the books. And, you know, we're huge fans of the novels. And I think we we made sure at every step that there was something that tied back to the novel somehow, whether it be in spirit or whether it be a literal plot point. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the nativity scene, that was something that was important that we really, really wanted to get in there. Um, so yeah, so that was, I, I think it was, there wasn't a lot of, 
pressure because I think we're both such big fans that we were just like, oh, we just want to make this something that we're really proud of. And I think that will translate to the fan reaction, which it seems like it has, so. No, it definitely did. And like I mentioned, I feel like it's one of like the most iconic, the most beloved scenes of the season. I mean, episodes of the season. What was it like seeing all the positive feedback from the fans? Because I feel like this episode really took off on Twitter. Uh, I mean, it it is, you know, without without knowing if we're getting a season three or not, I have to say it's uh, uh, it's kept me afloat. Like, <laughs> thank you so much for that. Like, uh, it's 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 really cool. Um, and I hope that you know we're able to do a season three and that it's um, you know, it, I mean, I guess that's going to be a whole new kind of intimidating is like trying to you know everyone one up winning up one up excuse me one upping themselves again uh, for next season, but. We're excited for that challenge should uh, Peacock give the green light. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Because you guys were also behind One of Us is Dancing in season one, right? That's right, yeah. Another great episode. Like, I feel like you guys just had hit after hit. So <laughs> crossing, <laughs> crossing our fingers for season three. And I mean, who was responsible for that iconic Nate when I love you scene? Oh man, there were so many great pitches for how that should play out. And um, I'll tell you, one of the alternatives that was like floated was for Bronwyn to actually take him to like Big Bear or Idlewild because they had till midnight and that would only take like, you know, a three hours round trip, theoretically. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just felt really strongly that like a callback to the nativity scene, you know, which was this fun, important part of their shared history, plus this this thing that it was more about sentiment it was that like Bronwyn can't literally you know make it snow but she could do this thing for him and then there was just something so romantic romantic to us because I, I remember in the room we were like just picture the <laughs> sorry I said shit again. the <laughs> terrible uh like snow machine like just you know raining snow it's beautiful but it's also so corny and cheesy and uh it's it's supposed to be this stupid it's thing like the right like amount of corny yeah and like the right amount of cheesy and in just... that moment that sad pathetic moment because nothing can ever go right for nate it's like <laughs> i love this girl you know and that's that that felt honest to us in a way that like felt right for these two characters and um and I, and you know i have to say too like our director roxanne benjamin should get a ton of credit for the like beautiful care she took in crafting that and and what follows like you know with you know their first sex scene which is just handled so beautifully it just felt so right like everything about that moment and their first time I think really felt right to us for like these two characters yeah and I feel like it just fit in so well with the Christmas um theming in the episode and it would just how they were about to go to jail like that all just fit in so perfectly and were you guys in New Zealand at all to see it unfold or oh I no, wish we wish. sadly we're, we were not um okay. but yeah. we, we did watch we got to watch the dailies as they came in so we you know we got updated as they were filming and we were like no notes they're doing great <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's beautiful everyone everyone is murdering it so to speak <laughs> uh, they were just on another level season two it was so good to see yeah. from afar we so wish that, we could have that must have been really fun to see everyone like your script coming to life and being able to see everyone portray that and I mean all these characters are so complex and they're all such individuals was there a hardest character to write for and we were talking about this um Stan, Stan? yeah Stan Stan's <laughs> <a> big <laughs> um Honestly, he's just he's a prima donna you know yeah he's really doesn't yeah. ever want to come out of his trailer he's a real piece of work <laughs> um no we we're talking about this it's like i think there are like levels to there are some that i think are easier to write for but i don't think any of them are necessarily difficult it might be for. For, for me it actually might be bronwyn and like i think it's because like when you approach bronwyn's character she's so she can be the straight man or the logical one and like it takes a lot of care to make sure that mm -hmm. we're seeing different sides of her and, and she doesn't become like annoying or yeah like you know you want I, like i really love um uh, when she banters with nate mm -hmm. because he can go toe to toe with her and not only is that fun to see because you know we love seeing these two together but also there's just this like wild fun spirit like buried underneath that nate kind of brings out of her and and that's that makes that's, I think that's where I go whenever I get stuck with with Bronwyn. 
Yeah, I guess I always think like with Bronwyn, what's fun about writing for Bronwyn is seeing these new aspects of herself that she is kind of discovering in the moment and that these new friends of hers are pulling out of her uh, in these scenes. So so that's always kind of a fun place to explore. It's like, oh, what, what is Bronwyn going to surprise herself with uh, this time? Um, but yeah. Yeah, and I think episode five was probably such a big episode in general for Bronwyn. And I mean, the whole karaoke scene, and I'm talking with Marianne Lee on Monday about it, so I'm very excited for that. But awesome. how did that come to be on your end? Like the whole karaoke? Well, basically, I, like one thing uh, we always look to is like, what's in the, like when approaching a season two, even like what's in the DNA of our show. And I'm so happy Erica fought so hard to make sure that Janae, uh, fuck you song. I mean, that's in the show. I can say that, right? Yeah. Uh, is in the, uh, <laughs> I think we've just, we've just uh, gotten used to, you're going to swear. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, basically that the, uh, the, that that she fought for that that scene and made sure that it that it stayed and obviously you know Janae killed it like that was just so great to see um Jess do that and basically uh when looking into season two we're like well we need to continue sort of this legacy the and, and the spirit of that and I want we, you know we wanted to feature as much like as many musical elements as possible which is why we have the, uh, you know, the Janae and her dad scene um, was wanted to see another Janae moment like that. And uh, also having um, Bronwyn doing the karaoke. Well, that came from basically Mary um, you know, had floated the idea of Bronwyn singing at some point. And uh, I, I, we just really liked it coming from a place we didn't expect. And there was some concern, like, you know, does this feel like Bronwyn? And, and in fact, that beach scene where they discussed like what would you do in your last on your last night of earth was rewritten several times you know we originally had it where Bronwyn kind of tied it back to Janae in the pilot where you know Bronwyn was like saying she was secretly envious of Janae who has like this kind of like who gives a fuck attitude and uh you know there was still like a little bit of pushback and Erica was like let me take a stab at it she wrote a much better version you know that's the version that like kind of made it to air where we kind of see the 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 real reason behind it you know Bronwyn without a script which I thought was brilliant and um I think that like allowed that scene to live um and that's kind of like how it came to be I also love the moment in that scene just to really quickly I think Marianne Lee, I can't remember if it was in the script or not, but when when Addie didn't know what she wanted to do and Mar and uh, Robin goes, that's okay. And it's just like setting up for that moment later where where when Addie realized what she actually did want I, I I just love that little like, yeah, they, they threw in so many great, I mean, and truly props to the cast. They really took the script and ran with it and they ad libbed great things that we kept and just, they were just so good. And, you know, moments like that are always, fun to see after the fact season two is a lot easier to to write as i imagine it's a lot easier to for them to you know the yeah. actors and and just the you know the familiarity with the characters and everything yeah i feel like everyone really knew who they were as characters this season and i mean even all the singing scenes there are some shows where it doesn't translate well like it just is so thrown in but I feel like all the singing scenes in one of us is lying it's so natural like it's very it's written in very well it mixes with the characters and like it just makes sense so I think that's one thing that really you guys and the cast everyone did well and I think it translates to the viewers because I think being able to see that in Bronwyn's karaoke scene in a way like if you're look, if you're thinking about it without seeing the season it doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. But then when yeah. it like plays in, like all of it kind of comes together. So I think that was done really well. And I know everyone loved it. And we touched upon this a little bit before with Bronwyn saying, I love you and where that scene was going to take place. But were there any scenes that you wrote that had to get cut out of episode five? So we actually, we went through uh, and looked for some of this stuff because uh, we knew you'd probably want to hear uh that there were there were i we'll get to the big one but there are a few lines that we that we love that had to get cut for time like uh basically when uh vanessa uh when cooper confronts vanessa at school uh in the beginning kind of and she runs away and she runs away and she you know she goes like oh my god i'm next aren't i you're gonna kill me and we originally had cooper saying you seriously think we're gonna kill you in broad daylight with what nut allergy 
and uh, yeah, it was, it was, I think, I think that one got cut before we even got to production. Um, but also in that scene, you'll see that uh, at the beginning of that, Vanessa's selling tickets to a jingle ball. And we originally had, when Janae and Maeve later go to the school to sneak into Gupta's office, we originally had them sneaking out of the jingle ball. And you'd never see it, but the door was going to open, there'd be lights and music, and they were going to comment on how they keep missing these dances for murder investigations. And uh, it was just like a fun little callback to, I to think, the home, is dancing. Yeah, the homecoming episode. Uh, but that also got cut for time. And... Uh, but Let's there see. was, but there was one big scene. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, we're not there yet. There's a little, <laughs> little other small. Ones. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize there was that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was okay. This one's this one you're gonna find particularly interesting in the scene where they're standing outside the police station, um, and they're all like they're like deciding to go in. Um, there, there was like a little bit more banter before they do, and uh, you know, there's like a comment made, and Nate says, "Definitely my most memorable birthday." And there's this moment of shock and they're like, it's your birthday. And Brahman's like, oh my God, I forgot. And he's like, well, we had a lot going on. And it was just going to be this like extra thing where Whoa. this day was also his birthday. <laughs> so that was supposed to be his birthday too. Because I know a lot of fans were wondering that because yeah. in the pilot episode, they brought up his birthday being in December and everyone's like, we didn't get to see Nate's birthday. So technically... We did get to see Nate's birthday. Just it was it was filmed too. So if if Peacock ever wants to do a uh, you know uh, extended scenes or bloopers or something, it it exists somewhere. That would be great <laughs> if Peacock ever wants to do that. There's the man for it. So absolutely. Um, <laughs> and then okay, okay, the biggest one that we cut was uh, very painful, but uh, we literally were given the option of you know, Bronwyn doing karaoke or this other thing. And we knew in our hearts what we wanted to see and what the fans wanted to see, but we all still love as a writer's room, this other thing. And I can't actually say what it is because I think we're all going to still do it in season three, but I will say it is heavily implied in the episode in two scenes. And a lot of the fans have pointed it out and gotten it right. So but we will neither conform. Okay. To that. Yeah. So a lot of fans have pointed it out and it's uh -huh. in the episode five and it's heavily referenced. Mm -hmm. It's just implied. Uh, so implied. If you can, you, if you watch the episode again, you can, I think you can imagine what scene got cut if you're eagle eyed. I'll be doing this right after this. I have to <laughs> well, I'm excited to see it in season three. I mean, that if fingers crossed, that's would be very fun to see. And I mean, even if, this next question doesn't pertain just to episode five of season two. Is there any scene or moment that was your favorite to write? Man, uh, definitely in this episode, um, the Addie Janae in the parking lot scene, um, I felt like that was huge, like for their relationship. And also I think it was really important to me, like whenever, whenever we approach writing an episode, especially, you know, a young adult show like this one, we want to make sure we're able to include moments of like where I, we feel like we're directly talking to the audience. And I thought that this was a really great moment to show that like for Addie, like it doesn't matter that she's not the star baseball player or the brain or, you know, that she is that you can be a good friend and that is one of the most valuable things that you can be and Janae pointing that out to her I mean I I think like you know while I was taking a pass at this scene I was like literally like crying because I was just you know thinking of Vinny and like who's my also my best friend and who's like gotten me out of uh you know dark places before and uh I just thought that was like a really fun like sweet moment to write where it felt like honest you know mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I love that scene. Um, I, I thought all the all the queer warehouse party stuff was fun because uh, it was so like a it was such a different vibe for the show, and to really see like Chris in his, you know, kind of environment and like just be so shocked to see Cooper there and just kind of 
living up to the promise uh, that we made in one of us is dancing of giving them a real dance that wasn't, you know, just make believe. Um, I, I loved all of that stuff. That was really fun. Yeah. And it should be said too, like, you know, Vinny and I, we work as writing partners, which means no matter what show we're on, we're always paired up. And uh, this is, you know, the, the, the magic that happens, you know, for us, like when we write together is that, you know, he'll write a scene, I'll write a scene, and we'll, we'll pass them back and forth. And our goal is to always get a reaction out of the other, you know, I'm always trying to get him to laugh or to, you know, feel something. And uh, he's a tough audience. <laughs> it doesn't always work. But it's sort of like that sort of uh, demands that we, you know, keep trying to one up each other and do something, uh, you know, that we both like. <laughs> But I will say, also, just to just to throw in on that, I will say this was our first time uh, getting to write a finale we co-wrote with Erica, obviously, and that was a blast. Like I, oh, yeah. I've always been a huge fan of finales. Um, you know, I was, I just think you know, obviously, that's the climax of the season. You, it's very exciting, and uh, this was our first time doing that, so that was a real great opportunity. And you know, actually, now that you bring that up, I uh, that was really some of the the most fun uh writing scenes in that were the actually the the flashbacks with um mm -hmm. fiona and with jake. jake yeah and that was because we really felt strongly like we're we're hu i'm a huge fan of scream i'm a huge fan of horror movies and thrillers and i just love 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 when you know you really get inside the villain's head and i thought that it was so cool to see these moments in Fiona's relationship with Jake that sort of really explain her character that didn't feel so much like exposition, but like this, these emotional, tangible things that we could see and experience with Fiona that helped us understand like how she got to where she did. And um, I don't think other, a lot of other shows wouldn't allow space for that. So I'm really happy we got to see yeah. Uh, you know, Fiona on that journey. I think that makes her more fun as a villain. Yeah, no, definitely. I actually just talked to Dora yesterday and we talked about that. Awesome. How, like, Fiona has that motive. Like from the outside, it's like she's killing these people and she's so mean, but it really was all in the writing how Jake was her the only person she had and she completely lost him. So it's kind of, it's cool to see how like that from a writing perspective and then also from the actor's perspective. And I mean, yeah, the finale was great. And then you had Simon says, ho, ho, ho. Is there any like dream episode that you have to write, whether it be another finale or another holiday? Yeah, uh, I will prom, definitely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, we talk a lot about prom. Yeah, uh, and you know, that's, there's a huge challenge. I mean, first of all, <clears throat> I, I feel, I mean, who knows what will happen with season three, but I feel there's gotta be a prom episode. And uh, I just think we that, can't promise anything. No, we're not. We're not a promise. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get in trouble. No, exactly. Who knows what will come of season three? This is just in literally Rick's fanfic. We talk about prom a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I, I would love to do that. You know, obviously the challenge is to make it very different than the homecoming episode. But you know, we have a few tricks up our sleeves, so uh, we have some ideas with that. But the uh, you know, to do that doing a, a you know oh, another nice. finale would be awesome but honestly to do any other episode would be great like we'd love to write season three Where, yeah. where's where's season three <laughs> where's our pickup? yeah where's our pickup <laughs> i have things that i want to write but i don't want to I, I i'm gonna choose to not share them because they might spoil future Ooh. potential yeah. seasons um, well but but i but just know that you know all we're always writers, thinking we're always thinking about it and all the writers on season two or everyone's so loves the show so much and we just hope we get to do many more seasons yeah and I mean as fans I know we hope to see everyone back for many more seasons and I can tell you one thing if there's ever room for a prom episode everyone wants to see it I know that's everyone even during season two was like maybe we'll get our prom and then we saw the graduation flash forward at the in the finale and we're like is there going to be prom in season three so that would be a great episode to see and this is just one last question I have. I didn't have it on the list, but if you could give advice to any future screenwriters or people who want to go into that industry, what would you tell them? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I, I definitely, 
like I think that that you know Vinny and I realized at some point early on while we were like assistants, you know, writers assistants, writers of PAs, that we were sort of chasing what we thought we should be writing, and it wasn't and it wasn't until that we both wrote literally something for ourselves for each other that uh, that was you know the first thing that we wrote that started to get attention. So I would say stop trying to like you know, learn the rules of how to write a, a screenplay and then throw them out and write the thing that you want to write mm -hmm. that, you know, showcases your voice that has something to say that, that, you know, is important to you. Um, and don't, don't worry about, you know, if the world's ready for it, uh, you know, cause, uh, people are looking for the next thing and they're looking for the thing that, that uh, you, you know they, they want to see you in the thing that you're writing and if you try to write like someone else they're not going to see that yeah that's that's really good um i would say you know i knew i knew in my senior year of high school that i wanted to be a tv writer after i watched an episode of buffy and I saw the credits roll and I thought, oh yeah, someone had to write all of this and do all of this. And I was like, that's what I want to do. Um, and I remember I was just, I, I used to think I wanted to be a comedy writer and I was obsessed with 30 Rock and uh, you know, Modern Family and Parks and Rec, all the great things. And I would like rewatch the episodes and just rewatch them and rewatch them. And then sometimes I would like turn my back to the TV and just let them play so that I would pick up on auditory things that I didn't, you know, I was missing because my eyes were were so glued to the screen. And then reading script, I, I you know, I constantly was reading scripts from 30 Rock uh, and just studying them. I was just like, became obsessed. And then I just kind of, you know, what Rick said, you, you learn the rules and then you kind of throw them out and you write what you want to write because this industry is ever changing in that way. It's like, they're always looking for the next big thing. We've seen it. We see it time and time again. Um, but wait, wait, that, that thing you said, I just want to add on to like the, the what rewatching of an episode, definitely like it once, once, like when I was very young, like learning something that I wanted to write, like finding an episode of TV that was maybe structured the same way and literally writing what happens in each scene oh, yeah. and how long it was. And then just trying to use that as a skeleton for, you know, it, it's very helpful um, because it helps you with pacing and plotting um, it, things that you are mostly learned, you know, skills. And uh, I think that's great advice. Yeah, no, that's really great advice. And it's true. You don't realize when you're watching it that someone had to write that and so yeah. much goes into it. And many people, uh, many, <laughs> usually many times, a lot of people, and now the, the TV is so collaborative. A lot uh, of literal blood, sweat, and tears, let me tell you. <laughs> so, you know, like, like, yes, we wrote episode five, but so many voices uh, went into that from the room and we really just took all those great ideas and ran with them. I mean, right? Kyle Warren, who wrote um, uh, the next the one, uh, the Vanessa episode, which is like our favorite, uh, you know, he he had the pitch for the Christmas tree on fire. And oh, we're yeah. like, yes, yes, Absolutely. yes, yes. We're stealing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's so cool to see how everything came together. Well, thank you so much for your time and talking all things Simon Says Ho, Ho, Ho with me um we hope to see we hope to see everyone back for season three we have our fingers crossed and happy holidays happy, happy holidays. holidays this was great thank you so much for having yeah, us thank on. you for having us yes this has been awesome